the session is conducted by losuit uh, i am sachin sengar i am the founder and ceo of losuit and uh, the session will be on un- urban farming in small spaces and it will be delivered by anjana devasthale ma'am uh, we'll talk we'll we'll introduce you to teacher uh, to the teacher in a while but before that uh, let us quickly uh, uh, like tell you a little bit about us uh, so we are essentially a startup that is driven to take climate action to everyone and uh, we are basically engaging more and more people every day to you know take part in climate action and uh, you know become a part of this uh, like the massive solution that we require in order to fight climate catastrophe so essentially what we do is that uh, we are making climate action accessible to everyone so what that means and how we do that is by helping individuals and companies track reduce and erase their carbon footprint and lead a carbon neutral life so uh, carbon neutral life is basically when your net emissions into the world is zero and that is what we do as a company as a startup uh as a part of our uh what do you say as a part of our awareness campaign uh we started green academy wherein uh, we got uh, experts from different parts of the you know uh, different aspects of uh, climate change uh, and basically got them to uh, give a talk or a session or basically educate more people about uh, climate change and how it can be tackled as a part of that initiative we have uh, anjana devasthale ma'am uh, she is a horti culturist by trade and profession she is also a agro farmer she is an educator she is an agro consultant to many companies and industries she is a bsc in agriculture and an msc in horticulture and she has also been a university topper uh she has also written this book called enchanting fragrance garden and yeah and uh, she has almost more than 25 years of experience uh teaching companies people and learning uh, uh you know microgreens and horticulture and agriculture all this so this is what her workspace looks like uh this is what she like this is what her day to day life looks like these are some of the clients uh that she is advising at this point in time and yeah and she is basically going to conduct this wonderful session uh and yeah over to you ma'am yeah uh good afternoon everybody um uh, wish you a very happy gudi padwa and ugadi and it's new beginning okay it's new year so new ways we are going to start and so many new things to do and so many new things to do sustainably uh so in this workshop that we are going to conduct and the course that follows i'm going to create a possibility of you will be able to grow your own a part of your own food sustainability that was you can grow with your own hands in front of your own eyes with your family and that food that you grow a part of that food that you grow will be chemical free which will be you know absolutely pure that you can just and uh, talking about the carbon credits and all you know just how you can uh, experiences that the food that travels will be from your window directly to your table so it's just going to be the um, carbon footprint can be reduced just by reducing the you know food miles that you food travel so basically in this course that will be uh, today i'm just going to show you what i do i stay on the apart from all the things that i do for my clients and um, on the farm i am a urban farmer i stay in thane which is near mumbai and um, i stay on the 10th floor in mumbai we have a great space crunch for spaces so uh, i do not have any terraces i do not have any balcony all that i grow is in my windows my windows are my farms and from my farms i have every day i have something to harvest for my large joint family and there is something for the smoothies there is something for the salad there is something for the chutney uh, you know it could be and sometimes when we are lucky we have something for the main course also 
So the, this is the possibility that I'm going to create for you. That once you start doing this course, you will be able to grow your own things with, you know, and you can use them right there in front of you, grow them and use them directly. Um, so, you know, there is one trend these days that is unboxing. And the trend that we are going to start today is harvesting. Uh, so I'll be talking about the trend of harvesting. Uh, I've been waiting for this days but I had, I was growing something in my um, window and I've been dying to harvest it. But today is the day that I'll do it right in front of you in this little baby tub that I had. Uh, somebody give, uh, gave, them, gave it to me after the children had grown up. And um, I would like to tell you one thing that when you do this course, you do not have to buy anything. Everything that you will be using will be what you collect from around you. So again, the possibility that you can do this, I'll start off now. I have to get up and I have to show you. I'm going to use this tool, which I use for digging. It's a, uh, you know, a tool that I'm used for digging. And this is one of the most used tools that I have. Okay. So I'll now start off with stand up and in this tub that I have, I, I must tell you that I'm not in my house. I've come to the office because I need to have good network and things. And from this, I'm going to start my harvesting work with this tool. Okay. So I'm digging out. Right. And when I dig, I'm harvesting these white onions right in front of you, right from my window that I had been waiting for. And here they come. Okay. So, and these are so, these are going to be so delicious, so flavorsome because all that they're being grown in is organic. There has been no pesticide, no chemicals, nothing. And that is what I'm going to teach you, you know, that in such a small place, one of the biggest constraints of growing in the city is that we do not have space. And in that little space that I have, that I can, in a week's time, I grow so much in such a small space, I can grow so much of veggies. You know, this is my, this is going to be my veggies for the evening, sabji or bhaji that I'm going to and this also has, it is so fresh and tender that I can use it as a salad. Can you hear the, the crunch? So this is the magic that when you start doing something in the urban farming, this is the magic that you create in such small spaces. In such small spaces, you can harvest. In such small spaces, you can grow and make the best of the use of the space that you have. So there are so many things, you know, because just because I can't carry my entire garden, this is one of my favorite veggies. Because I don't have enough space, I hang things. Okay? And this is the malba spinach, which keeps coming and coming. So uh, the more I harvest, the more I grow. You know, the more I grow, the more I harvest. And the more I harvest, the more it grows. So it is like this. My favorite pudina, which flavors my chutneys and my smoothies every day. So Everything that I have is in hanging, right? So if you have a great face, great, you will be growing deep. It will be very easy for you to grow. But if you have a small space like me, the window, then also you will be able to do a lot of things. So that is my promise. And this is how the course will be about. Um, I'll tell you briefly about the course, how it will go. Uh, right from the basics, there will be a great, there will be in depth explanation because I'm not sure a lot of you people, a lot of you have, I'm from Mumbai, you would have joined from Bangalore, you would have joined from Delhi or wherever in India and the soil and the climatic conditions are going to be different. And so when we are going to talk about each and everything, we'll be talking about things I'll be showing you, I'll be demonstrating, I will be practical explanations, there'll be question answers, there'll be a lot of doubts and everything will we solved in this and the course is designed in such a way that from one sowing to harvest okay so you have enough time to understand you know it's like the baby is born and 
baby is growing up, you might have some difficulties at every stage. But since you are going to grow with the, um, uh, along with the course, it's not just one day that you've learned something and do, or it is not something that you just, you know, one random video you see and do. You have to understand the basics. So right from the place that you select, everybody would have a different situation. Like I have in my house, I have different windows. And according to the light that comes into the windows, I have different things to go. So depending upon that, we'll be, you know, in the, when you join this course, you will be given little, little uh, task that you have to observe the amount of sunlight that comes into the window or the kind of uh, time that you have or to do your garden or uh, do you have some problems that come to the garden. So all that little things you'll have to learn uh, and you'll be, have, you'll be observing and doing it. So it is do along with me, do it yourself and tell me what's going wrong, what's going right. And with, there'll be discussions also. And so this makes a community of urban farmers. So you join a whole community where I'm available throughout to answer your questions. Okay. One thing that I'm going to teach you or I'm going to show you today is how to make, um, now, you know, look at this. Is this imaginable that in a pot as small as this, which is a recycled mushroom pot, you can harvest a bunch of vegetables, a bunch like this, which will suffice for the whole family, and that too in a week's time. So what is it? It is the soil medium that we use. Okay. So today I'll show you how to create a soil medium that is so rich, that is so productive, that in a small space you can harvest one and a half kgs of onions or a bunch of veggies or um, grows, uh, grow on and on. Um, before I start with the demo, I'll, um, I'll just tell you that I have selected a pot that is, I have recycled this dappa or uh, this pot and purposely I've taken a transparent pot because you'll be able to see the layers, you'll be able to see how things are going, right? Now, this uh, container uh, that I have taken, the most Overlook perhaps layer is the bottom. So if you see here, I've made holes. So any pod that you take or any container that you take uh, will have to have sufficient holes at the bottom. Now, when I say sufficient holes, and people would often mistake that you make holes, so they make with a needle or a pin. But these holes are made, I've made it with my favorite tool. Uh, just heat it up and see, you can see there are pencil thickness holes. Okay, so if you can see the holes, you will see that there are numerous holes. Now, the need for these numerous holes is that the water should not stay. Now, these holes actually work as the kidneys. They work as the kidneys of the pot, if I, if I have to use an, an analogy, because they allow the excess to flow off. Okay, so if once, if the uh, water stagnates, then the plant is in trouble. But here, there would be no stagnation of water, okay? Now, another thing uh, we need to, uh, the challenge, you know, I'm sure most of you who are urban farmers or who grow things in the windows would always experience this problem that um, the material that you need has to be lightweight, you know? So if I were to take something, then there's always a problem of, like me saying on the 10th floor that the water is going to drip out or the pot is too heavy or the soil, you know, the plant is not doing so well. So when we are making the medium, so we'll not call this the soil, we'll call it the medium. When we are formulating it, it has to address a lot of questions. First, it has to be well draining. So we, we put the pots. Second, it has to be lightweight. Because it, you know, it, when, like when I hang the plants in my grill, they have to be light. They can't be heavy, you know, that the grill comes off someday. And um, uh, that also ensures the safety. And another thing that uh, I have to handle is that it has to be entire. It has, has to be very, very, very productive. Because as the plant grows, I'm sure most of you have uh, realized this, or I don't know if you have uh, experienced this, but a lot of people come to me uh, during my workshops and things, that you know, when we brought the plant from the nursery, it was looking very healthy. The plant doesn't like my space. 
no now it's looking it's not looking so healthy it's looking unwell or it's looking sick or is it going to die is it dry so all those questions are because we uh, initially the plant when it is in the nursery it is very well looked after it's rather not looked after only it is pampered but when it comes home we all we do is water okay i think that most of the people do all that they do is water whereas what the plant is doing as the plant is growing also needs food and the food is to be given to it every single day it's growing it needs food so when they make this kind of soil uh, the magic formula so called magic formula that i'm going to show you now would be that you know every single day along with the water the plant is going to be getting okay so now to grow a pot uh, to grow a plant first thing we need is a pot now the pot can be of any material now uh, it has to be sturdy it can be a uh, re upscale or reused bottle it can be a drum it can be anything from as from in my case i uh, reuse carboys now carboys are cans which are cut and so they make 25 liters pots okay so a 50 liter carboy when it is cut it makes a 25 liter pot which is great and it gives a lot of space to grow now after that whatever container you take it can be a you know a pot a matka or whatever whatever material you want to use is the plant doesn't mind it okay it's not just that the plant requires something earthen the plant can it can grow very well in the plastic also no problem uh, there are uh, when you know in the course of the uh, uh, in due course well, in the course you learn different kind of plus uh, pots that you can make there are a lot of um, self pruning spare root pruning pots so i'll be showing you in detail about pots also but here you need to learn that any pot can be made into a container in this container the next pot the next thing that you need to add is big bag swing okay so all the whole so these big bags when you add the big bag So here I've added the big bags, which make the lowermost layer of the pot. Now that covered, if I were to show you like this, the pot, the holes have been covered, right? Now the holes have been covered with a draining material. The big bags you can use again. It's not just the big bags; you can use any coarse material. Even coconut shells can be used. whatever is flat or whatever is going to be a coarse material can be put in so the first layer is of this coarse material this is also a drainage material like i told you this is the most important thing most of the gardening activities go wrong because drainage is poor okay there is nothing that can kill a plant as fast as poor drainage nothing else you don't give it feed for um years the plant will survive you don't water it it can survive for a week but poor drainage leads to poor conditions and the plant unknowingly dies fine now second layer once you've done with this you can you need to add second layer is these dry leaves okay so i'm going to put in dry leaves fine now dry leaves is a resource that is either burned or thrown away or it goes to the landfill when you put these dry leaves in they will eventually they will also compose they and when the roots of the plants leave that reach that level they will get some nutrients from that and it the dry, dry leaves when they compose they become a very rich material which is called the leaf mold so that's what we need to put in so again i'm putting a great layer of um, dry leaves if you don't have dry leaves you have you know this is what most of the houses in mumbai are going to get now this is the rice husk from the mango boxes so whatever you have whatever dry material those of you from karnataka or those of you from south india will have the coconut shavings that also you can use so that this is the most the holes the brick bags and the leaves form the drainage layer this layer later the leaves will also turn into a 
um, compost and they will also aid to the uh, help of the plant later on. So initially there will be only a fine filtration medium. So I can put in more of this. If the plant is smaller, I put in more of this. Right? So this is how and when you know, you have to know one more thing that is often overlooked again, is pressing. This is the pressure that you have to give. Gardening is all about pressure, okay? So I'll be showing you how. So now when you put in the pressure, this layer will settle down. So this makes a basic drainage filtration medium. Very often we have this problem that when you water the plant, the plant, you know, the water that flows off is muddy. And a lot of people are put off. Again, that uh, when the excess water is given, it's a waste of resources. You're wasting water. And second, all the nutrients which are soluble in the soil get wasted. So they drain off. Now, this layer is actually going to act as a filter. It's also going to act as a sponge. And it will hold the excess water from flowing off. And will hold the excess soil from flowing off. Right? Now, keeping this aside, we'll work with the mediums. Now, I have a lot of um, things that we can add in to make a rich soil. So the soil mixture that we make has a lot of components. One of the components, of course, is, you know, generally we think that soil means only soil, that mitti, you know. But uh, of late, there is a lot of concern about the soil that's used in gardening. Because um, the soil that is used in gardening is dug up from some virgin place. It could be dug from the hillside or it could be dug from uh, some fertile uh, fields and the top soil is removed. So a concern that we are going to address while making the soil is that we, as far as possible, we will reuse the soil that we already have or we'll make our own soil. In my case, I do not get soil, soil from outside. I make my own soil. So you can actually make your own soil. Now, when you make your own soil, that means you will be using resources. You'll be using some resources sustainably to make the soil. One is that um, I make my own compost and I make my own soil from leaves, dry leaves, compost, and that. That also uh, is one, lect uh, one lecture and demonstration, especially for making your own soil. So that also we'll have in detail. But today I'm just going to show you. Now, this rich compost has come from my own. I have made this. Okay? Now, the success, my success, uh, of doing things in small spaces, like you uh, uh, just saw, is from the rich compost that I need. And it is this, you know, generally when people think that when I touch soil, my hands get muddy, my hands get dirty, but here, you'll see, it is fine. And it smells heavenly. So it is, you know, the very earthy smell, the very um, wonderful earthy smell is from this. So this is one compost. And the best thing about this compost is that apart from giving nutrients to the plant, uh, it makes the soil or the medium very rich in nutrients and it acts as a sponge. It holds the water and releases the water and the nutrients slowly to the plant. So this is one compost. Then the second medium that I use is, this is the second medium and this is called cocoa peat. Now, cocoa peat is the, it's now the rev, revolution in gardening and revolution in horticulture. Uh, so, till now, uh, till a recent year, uh, a few years, um, the coil industry, the coil industry was, this was a waste of the coil industry. But now it has been, uh, it is being used in the, uh, agriculture is being used in floriculture, it's used in soilless gardening. This is the material that's being used, and it is an excellent medium to do it. Now, it's neutral, it, it does not offer any nutrients, but it has a texture to the soil. So it holds water, it holds nutrients, and releases. So it's again a second spongy medium that we have. Then the third medium that I have here 
is my from my first group of plants, the soil that I had kept. Okay. So I had I have harvested some veggies and some plants, and this is the soil that I'm going to reuse. You know, there is like in um, in our pl uh, place, people have this trend that mitti badalni. I have to change the soil of my pots. That's not done. No, how can you just throw away the mitti and let it go to the land? So you will not be throwing away any mitti. You will only be recycling and you'll be, you know, adding to the nutrients to make it rich. Apart from that, here I have. Now these uh, things that I have, these are these is called a neem cake. Okay, this is the neem cake, and neem cake basically is a very dense organic manure. Okay, now because I have neem cake available, depending upon where you are in the country or abroad, different cakes. So these basically oil cakes are a very very dense. And rich uh, nutrient nutrient loaded uh, material. So we'll be mixing all of these. So the proportion of this waste form. So this neem cake will slowly and steadily it will decompose, and it will on one side it will be adding nutrients to the plants, and it will be giving providing nutrients to the plants, making the soil rich. And secondly, it will be uh, keeping away the uh, ants and the insects, so it acts as a retardant. Okay, so now we have, depending on where you live and what kind of soil is there, like I told you, we will be uh, because when we are talking of soil, we talk we'll be addressing a lot of things, you know. So at some places now here in Mumbai, we have a soil that is black white thick, and it is you know it has a very um, rough. Structure. If there is someone from North, or some from for Delhi, they would have an alluvial soil. So that is going to be a very clay soil. Okay. So uh, I would be addressing you. You will learn and you will be seeing how any soil can be converted into different, you know, into a very um, uh, aerated, very fluffy soil. By using you. so you can make your own mix and matches. After this uh, lecture or after this um, demo that you're going to see, you will be able to grow any plant with with rich soil, right? So here, depending on which soil you have, you will be changing little textures. You know, like if I were to have this workshop in Delhi, I would have told them that add a little more of it. So your the dense soil would become more fluffy. Which otherwise becomes very hard would you know become more arid, right? If I were to do this in some other place, I would. If I were to do this workshop in Rajasthan, I would have told them that because your soil is very sandy or your or, or the water flows away from that, let's add a little more of compost and let's add a little more of um, um, cocoa. So you know these are mix and matches and additions that you'll be able to make, and that's how you're going to, right? So here I have now. If you can see this, I'll stand up and show you. This this is the soil that I had reused soil which I'm going to make, and then I have the compost from my garden, the compost from my pots. I'm just going to make them. Into one part of compost, one part of reused soil. Yeah. So this is my reused soil. This is my compost, and this is my cocoa peat. Unfortunately, I see on the screen you don't see the colors, but here I see them brown, uh, black, and light brown. Fine. So this is my old soil, which is. You know, leached from all the nutrients, the plants have grown in them and consumed all the nutrients. This is the compost that I have from my garden that I have made from a bin, and this is the cocoa bean. So I have taken them all in one is to one is to one position. Okay, so they're all taken in the same proportion. 
one is to one is to one because here in Mumbai, the soil is um, murmur. Okay, it is lateritic, so it is not a very um, it does not allow a lot of water to sit in. Then in that, I have put a handful of my neem paint, the neem cake that I'm going to crush because it's hard and it needs a pressure to cut and then it up, right? So this all will be mixed up where, right? This is all going to be mixed up thoroughly. And this feel of mixing itself is mixed. Now, again, when you're mixing up all this, after it is mixed up well, you have to see that there's not too much water. No, it should not be, when I'm going to sprinkle some water on it. So when you're putting in water, you have to sprinkle the water, right? Don't pour water. And when I mix it, the moisture content is important. Initially, when you're planting or when you're going to plant seeds or when, and you, this is the, it's called the mud wall um, test. Okay, so this is called the mud wall test where you make laddus out. You put pressure and make laddus. So now this is the optimum moisture that when I press it in my fingers, I make a wall out of it. But the wall is not squeezing water. It is hard enough, it's moist enough to make a ball. And the moment I press it, it crumbles. So this is the mud ball test. Whatever you do, whenever you do gardening, whatever you will plant, you need to have this much moisture in this one. Not more, not less. Because if the moisture is more, then it's going to be dripping, it's, and the roots will not fit in. And you will not have it too dry because when it's too dry and you fill in the pot, you can't press it down. I told you, like I told you, pressure is so much important in gardening. So when you're making it like this, it should form a ball and the moment you drop it, it crumbles. So that's the soil to the test. It should, that's the amount, optimal amount of moisture. Now this soil ball test, basically it tells you that there is optimum moisture and optimum air in the soil. We've always been taught in school, you know, the plant uh, taking carbon dioxide, the leaves taking carbon dioxide and without oxygen. But we, unfortunately, they didn't teach us, or unfortunately, we didn't hear that the roots require oxygen to breathe. The roots, plant roots, if they're devoid of oxygen, and uh, then they'll not be able to breathe. So that is why when we are making this kind of moisture uh, and air, that the roots that are going to grow in will have absolutely enough air moisture and air for the growth. Fine. Now comes our pot, which we had kept the layer ready. I'll press in this material. Now, there it goes. And then I fill it with this. Right? So we put in four. Again, depending upon the availability, it's not that you just have to put in Cocoa peat, whatever material is ready, whatever is more. But why I insist on cocoa peat? Because cocoa peat is a replacement to the soil. And um, I, if you are aware, um, there is a lot of work that's going on in uh, soil conservation. A lot of soil is being washed away. A lot of good soil, which was supposed to be in the farm, which was supposed to be in the fields, is just going off. So we need to conserve the soil. And using cocoa peat and using these compost and using leaf mold is one way of sustainability. And that is how we can help. Like, you know, at every step, we can contribute to sustainability and this is how we can Fine. Now, here I go and put this. So as you do this, you have to press it down. Press it down. Huh? Now, the big layer of or leaves that we have put in as we press down. And there you go. So now if I were to show you when I water this pot, 
the water that will flow away will not be muddy. My intention is not to let the water flow away. The first thing is, you know, uh, like I told you, you have to water it enough so that the it is water deep. The water should go to the lowest, lowermost layer, and it just should stop there. It should not flow out of the pot because when it is flowing out of the pot, it means it's draining of all the nutrients of all the productive nutrients that should have been there available for the plants. Okay, so this is how we fill the pot, and this is the most important. Now, once the pot is filled, you can plant your roses, you can plant your veggies, you can plant. Anything that you want. Another thing that I want to show you is that in the course of this, we'll be making plant tonics. Okay, this again because our um, main inten intention in this uh, course on urban farming is to replace chemicals in all sorts of things. So when we are going to make these, we are going to formulate our own plant tonics. Because as the plant grows, at every stage of growth, it needs nutrients. So one is the soil is going to provide all the nutrients. Soil mixture that we are making is going to provide all the nutrients. And it's also going to hold in the nutrients that we put from outside. So we'll be formulating our own plant tonics. We'll be formulating our own um, plant nutrients. We'll be form formulating our own uh, pesticides. And plant uh, and pest retardants. So nothing that goes in for growing the plants is going to be bought from outside. It's all that we are going to make from what is available around us, what is available, and it will all be of biological age. Okay. So this is what I will. And I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I could see some things uh, popping up in the chat box, but. I think at this stage I should stop and I just wanted to show you how the course is going to go and I'm open for questions now. I'm sure you have lots of them and um, uh, over to you Sachin. Please. Yeah, so I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions. So it was a wonderful session. We really, really loved it and I am definitely inspired to sort of have a proper garden in my house. I have a good balcony so I'll definitely do that. Uh, yeah, and uh, so basically we'll have a Q&A, but we'll have it at the end. Uh, right now we won't be able to, uh, like we'll, we'll do it at the end, that's, that's how we have planned it. Uh, right now what I will do is I'll tell you about the course in a little more detail, so that if you have any questions about the course or related anything related to whatever map set, you can ask. Is Shows us black. Oh, now it is visible. Now it's visible. Okay. So yeah, so this course is for somebody who would want to grow veggies at, in their balcony. And uh, if once you have taken this course, you will uh, basically be a micro expert in growing stuff at your place. Uh, there, are, there will be nine modules to this course. The first will be focused on understanding plants and their needs. Second will be understanding the soil, then propagation, then what uh, plant nutrition, composting, pests and diseases and weeds, how can we ensure he, uh, that's not happening to the plants. A garden calendar and schedule, uh, one of the modules, growing your own herbs and then microgreens. Um, if you have any questions related to any of these, you can either write in the chat or you can ask uh, during the session, uh, like during the Q&A. Uh, so who is it for? It is for somebody who wants to be a micro farmer, somebody who wants to grow at home, somebody who is a hobbyist, somebody who wants to adopt a sustainable life, like lifestyle, and somebody who is starting off something in you know, the green space and is a green entrepreneur. So that person can also take up this course. Uh, by 2045, we basically will be producing 40% less food uh, because of the rate at which the global temperature is increasing and how uh, the dynamics of the planets are changing. And it's very, very essential for us to learn this at this point in time, teach our kids so that they are uh, you know, strong against the adversities that might come up in the future. And uh, yeah. 
So now, uh, what we'll quickly show is uh, one of uh, Anjana Ma'am's student uh, who has uh, learned this from her. One of her. Uh... Hi, I'm Amita Nagar Katti. I'm a hairstylist by profession and a nature lover. I was never happy with the chemically ridden vegetables and fruits I used to get. So when I heard of uh, Anjana Devasthari's urban farming course, I jumped at it and I was more than pleased. Her excellent instructions and easy to follow methods have helped me. And now I have a beautiful little vegetable patch in my pots in my window and I enjoy the fruits of her labor and I'm in love with what she has taught and it's an amazing journey. Thank you. These are some more testimonials uh, of Isha and Sri Sri Lata. We'll share this slide with you guys so you guys can also go through it later. Uh, yeah, so for all this, for basically studying for, for the nine modules, for doing la uh, live classes every Saturday, uh, for all the recorded videos, for community support, for full lifetime access to the videos and then getting a certificate. It's a 12 week course as well. We, uh, the, the charges for the course is 9999. Uh, in this 9999, you'll get access to all of this for the entire lifetime. Uh, However, if you are uh, signing up for the course, uh, say in next one week, uh, you'll get the course for 7999. You will have access, same same access, recorded videos, community, support, etc. Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, certificate of completion, full lifetime access, live classes every Saturday will always be there. So for 7999, if you do it in the next seven days. However, we have an early word offer. Uh, for somebody who goes ahead and chooses to go ahead with the course in next 48 hours, you get access to everything, but for uh, 5999, so a lot of value for the course at a very uh, affordable price. So yeah, so now we have the floor open for Q&A. Uh, 